So good afternoon. There we go. Uh, so first and foremost, thank you uh, for joining us today um, here in Philadelphia. Um, the topic of the discussion uh, today is really how do we support the ninth grade transition? Uh, school District of Philadelphia has roughly 41,000 uh, high school students. And we know that uh, putting students on a pathway to success is how we move forward to be able to approach Anchor Goal 1, which is 100% of young people graduating college and career ready. There's another uh, message that we are also communicating uh, within the school district is that for all children, a high school of choice close to where they live. This is also in alignment with the school district's action plan 3.0 which is putting us on a pathway to equity and eliminating uh, uh, barriers that are preventing young people from attending a good school. In the School District of Philadelphia, we define college and career readiness as a student taking ownership and graduating from high school with the academic knowledge and skills necessary to qualify for and succeed in credit-bearing post-secondary coursework and or training without the need for remediation. As an organization, uh, last year uh, we engaged in a uh, uh, team building and a stakeholder uh, team planning process with one goal, which was to identify what are the core foundations for the framework that would become the college and career readiness framework. To then be able to use this framework to inform the work of not just the office, but also how we begin to restructure the school district in support of this work uh, that supports Anchor Goal 1. The four core tenets that were determined by this cross-sectional stakeholder group, both internal and external, was college and career aspiration, uh, uh, academic knowledge and skill, academic tenacity and engagement, and then ultimately college and career access. These are the four core tenets that drives the alignment work uh, associated with the office. A theory of action is, is very simple. Um, although not simple to implement. Uh, if we inspire students to have a vision for their future beyond high school, elevate student agency through the explicit teaching of college and career readiness, and if we encourage learning through the participation of educational workforce development experiences, then we are um, confident that that will move us to that goal of, of Anchor Goal 1. A few of the initiatives in which we've organized, uh, in 2015, there was no Office of College and Career Readiness. Uh, so the first was to actually establish the Office of Career Readiness, then to establish the framework, and then think about how does that uh, uh, travel within the K-12 continuum. So continuing to support early literacy, which we know, uh, and there's uh, data that supports that if students are not able to read, uh, prior to entrance into or exiting from elementary school, they have a significant task that prevents them from being able to pursue uh, appropriate academic endeavors in high school. In addition, we know that math uh, uh, is also a barrier to students being able to meet that college and career uh, benchmark, and therefore, how can we uh, as an office support not just the expansion but the preparation in mathematical concepts for students before they get to high school. In addition to prioritizing an emphasis on advanced coursework as well as career connected education, but ultimately landing us to where we are today, which is focusing on reimagining of the high school experience. Whereas all schools are offering programs of study aligned to post-secondary expectations, uh, which gets us back to the discussion about how do we create schools of choice. Within the school district, we have a portfolio of uh, 53 high schools, all different shapes and sizes to be able to meet the varying and growing needs of our young people. But for the purpose of today's discussion, we're going to drill down and target uh, our neighborhood high schools, uh, which are uh, the third category in blue, which makes up roughly 50% of all high school students within the school district of Philadelphia. <coughs> There's three core areas of focus that are driving this work about how do we support young people as they transition into high school, and one really deals with attendance. So if you look at the chart, we have broken down by band in terms of, uh, of attendance. The number of absences uh, last year of our high school students 
ranging from zero to one all the way up to 20 or more. So the boxes in gray are for uh, the district, which uh, equates to the district average, but we've disaggregated and the blue represents the neighborhood high schools, which accounts for 50% of our young people. So if you fix your eyes to the far right column and it shows that 50% uh, of the young people that attend our neighborhood high schools are missing 20 or more uh, days. What that translates into is that uh, one out of every two students in our neighborhood high schools are missing more than one month of school per year, and it could be more. So we, you, we're using this specific data point in order to uh, inform our strategy as it relates to the ninth grade transition. Oops. Uh, the second core area is behavior. Uh, we know that culture and climate affects positive student outcomes, and we wanted to make sure that we were providing necessary attention based on this. So if you move uh, to your far left-hand corner, one of our goals within the district is to increase the numbers of students with zero out-of-school suspensions. As a district average, 89% uh, of the students that attend uh, high school have zero uh, out-of-school suspensions. 80% of the young people that attend our neighborhood high schools, so half of our high school students, eight of, of that 80% have zero out-of-school suspensions. So we know that one way to increase student performance is not just to manage behavior, but to also incentivize and encourage a positive academic culture. So this is one of the second areas of focus within that transition plan. And the third, really tackles this concept around credit attainment. Uh, if you look uh, at the gray bar, it shows you the total number of ninth grade st uh, students within the school district of Philadelphia. So a little over 9,200 students, and of which 5,000 uh, of those students attend the neighborhood high schools. But the more troubling number that we are looking to, to improve is the number of repeaters. So these are students that have spent more than one year in the ninth grade. Whereas of the 1,066 ninth grade uh, repeaters, 883 attended those neighborhood high schools, which accounts for roughly one out of every five ninth graders in those neighborhood high schools has been in the ninth grade for multiple years. The data that we've collected over the last several years from the Office of Research and Evaluation has indicated that students that fail two or more core academic classes are 75% less likely to graduate on time. So this is a data point that we are also seeking to tackle with this ninth grade transition. Goal setting. Uh, we were able to pull together uh, uh, 20 of the neighborhood high schools. We've added additional resources within those 20 neighborhood high schools in the form of school leaders, targeted professional development, and additional support mechanisms. And there's three core goals that we're using to begin this work in terms of the transition to ninth grade. One is maintain 95% of ninth graders attending 95% uh, or more instructional days. This translates to nine or fewer absences within the continuum of the school year. Second goal is maintain 95% of ninth graders with zero out of school suspensions. Uh, and third, maintain that 95% of students earn at least five or more credits during their first year of high school, with the cumulative of 23.5 being what's needed for students to earn a high school diploma. Some of the key program components that are being established in each of these 20 schools is dedicated academy leadership, advisory, um, a robust summer transition program, in addition to ongoing support in and outside the classroom as it relates to positive behavior, rigor in the classroom, differentiation, um, support for how you organize and how you group students within the, the school day, and then making sure that each and every school has opportunities uh, for teachers to collaborate and receive uh, personalized professional development to meet the needs of their students. The strategies that have been birthed as a result of uh, the collection of the data over a period of years, uh, strategy number one is to be able to monitor students uh, with low attendance. 
develop personalized plans for those students with the trigger coming sooner rather than later. The existing system we captured were, was once students reached six absences, but we felt that that was insufficient given we were trying to hit students sooner rather than later. Also, to provide incentives uh, that support and promote uh, the reason why students need to come to school. And then finally, aligned with that focus area of, of, of uh, number one, is to make sure that each student has the opportunity to set an attendance target and that they're held accountable and they're also supported to be able to meet those attendance targets with the focus of students not uh, getting uh, to the 95 percent immediately but looking at the varying bands of where students fall meeting them where they are how can they move to the next band of performance within the by the end of the year so if you're a student that's in the 90 percentile how can we work with that particular student to get to 95 percent and so on and so on Strategies associated with uh, positive behavior and academic culture focuses on uh, monitoring the suspension and discipline data broken down by subgroup and then being able to identify if there is overrepresentation within your school. Also, uh, adding additional incentives and interventions and supports that continue to promote. So we want to move away from punitive practices and into restorative practices that not just reward but also acknowledge students as they grow. Uh, throughout the school year and then how are we not just monitoring and tracking but celebrating the improvements in student behavior and academic culture. Strategies as they relate to credit attainment really uh, a drill down to classroom instruction. Performing daily classroom observations and providing meaningful bite-sized actionable feedback to ninth grade teachers, making our ninth grade teachers and their development a priority performing weekly progress checks with teachers in order to identify struggling students, and then measuring the level of support and student progress towards mastery in their core academic classes. And then ultimately making sure that students are afforded an opportunity to make up missing work, uh, resubmit work that is unsatisfactory, or thinking about with the diverse type of students that we have within our district, alternate ways to assess and measure progress. So within our school district, and, and when I say just getting started, um, the Office of High School Support um, was created in August of 2016. So when we say getting started, there's a lot of work that has been done that's laid the foundation for the work moving forward. Um, but the new executive director uh, for high schools, her official start date was August 22nd. So this is, uh, uh, what we're doing in order to get started. So really, how do we drill down and begin with the development of systems and, and structures and supports in place within our neighborhood high schools in the form of ninth grade academy? How are we uh, supporting, encouraging, and developing instructional leaders within those 20 schools? How are we also supporting positive climate and culture within those schools? How are we measuring progress and tracking and making sure that when, at the point when students begin to fall behind, there's a plan in place to support students so that they remain on track throughout the year and that students do not fail. And then part of this bigger picture is how do we reach out within our communities to ensure that we're dispelling myths about the capabilities and the opportunities present for our students that attend these particular schools. And we believe that as an exciting first step um, that this will help uh, move us towards our goal of 100 percent of students ready for college and career. Thank you. Thank you.